Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester one, introduction to networks. This is chapter three, and it's uh, network protocol and communication, which is part 3.2, network protocol and standards. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain why protocols are necessary in communication explain the purpose of adhering to protocol suit, explain the role of standards organizations in establishing protocol for network interoperability, explain how the TCP IP model and the OSI model are used to facilitate standardization in the communication process. Rules that govern communication. Network protocols define a common format and set of rules for exchanging messages between devices. Some common networking protocols are like IP, HTTP and DHCP. On later on your studies, you will we will discuss a lot more about these protocols. But the rules that govern the communication is like, for example, we need a content layer. For example, the message from source to destination that's in the content layer. What you actually want to send. So, for example, this source is going to ask this destination, "Where is the cafe?" For example. Now we have to follow some rules. For example, the first rules in common and um, conversation protocol is like okay we have to use the same language or common language then we can't both speak at the same time and then we have to somehow signal to each other when we are finished actually the f at the physical layer the message is actually traveling so these are the the suit that we have to follow for our message to be delivered successfully network protocols what do the protocol network protocols do they they decide on how the message is formatted or structured the process by which networking devices share information about pathways with other networks. For example, we have a networking protocols who will find out or share the information about the routing destinations and it will find out the best path to get to that destination. And they have a er how and when error and system messages are passed between the devices. The setup and termination of data transfer sessions. So proprietary protocols have the definition and operation controlled by one company or vendor. For example, Cisco has their own protocols, they're in charge of, they have created it, and they are proprietary protocols, which means that not any other devices apart from Cisco devices will be able to use those protocols. Then we have a TCP IP protocol suite as an open standard, not a proprietary protocol. If it's not a proprietary protocol, that means that everybody, every device can use it. Any factor, manufacturer is fine. Um, so pretty much for every proprietary protocol, we have a not a proprietary protocol as well uh, going there. Interaction of protocol in communication between the web server and web client. For example, the communication from start, say this starts from this is a source and this is a destination. This message is going to go through the uh, through the layers to to get to the destination. For example, the, so the uh, message is like, get me a web site or web page. Then the application layer is going to identify that message. Okay, well, this is a, a website or web page that he's trying to access. Then it will that message will go through the, to the transport layer. The transport layer is going to decide, okay, well, how big is this message? Can we actually deliver the whole message? Or do we have to split it? If we have to split it, fine, the transport layer will split it. And at that point, it's called a segment. The transport layer is going to identify what kind of application it is by using adding port numbers. So source port number and destination port number. For example, destination port number for web is 80 or secure web is 443. Then the message will travel down. So as it's going down, it's called encapsulation. So the message will travel down and you hit the internet protocol or internet layer. Internet protocol is going to decide, okay, well, What's the logical address? What is the IP address of this device, of the source? And what is the IP address, which is the logical address of the web server? Then it will decide the best path to get to the destinations. So the routers that work on this layer, they will find, okay, well, this message is going from this source to this destination. What is the best path to get there? Then at the Ethernet layer or network access, network access layer, this is TCP IP stack, yeah? So the not OSI model. At the Ethernet is going to decide, okay, what, what is the physical address or the MAC address of this source and the destination? And then it will travel to the destination. So it's like, it's like imagine if you're like sending a, a, something valuable to your friend. Yeah, you're not going to just take it to the post office and, and put a label in it and here we go, take it. 
we have to, for example, maybe you want to cover that uh, valuable to bubble wrap, put it in one box, put it in another box, then write down your, your address on the box, your source address and the destination address, and then we take it to the destination. That is called encapsulation for in the networking. Now, at the destination, as a as a uh, the person you send that the, the delivery to opens that box bit by bit, that's called de encapsulation. So it's going to look at it, Ethernet layer, and find out that yep, the my MAC address, so it's for me. Then it's going to look at the IP address, and yep, it's the my my IP address, so it definitely is for me. And then it, it's going to look at the transport uh, protocol or transport layer. Tra it's going to have lots of different segments, and for example, it's going to put all the segments together and hand it over to the application layer. Protocol suites and industry standards. Here we have a, some kind of protocol suites that we have for TCP IP model, ISO, Apple Talk, Novel, Netware. Don't need to know any of these, th these three, you don't need to know. Let me just go back here and sign these ones. Ban any of these for the CCNA uh, lessons. You got no, no need to learn of them, right? To get rid of these. All we are concentrated is this. Yeah, these are our protocols. What we have to understand. For example, we have the application layer. We have some protocols: HTTP, DNS, DHCP, and FTP, which we're going to talk a little bit more in the next section, next slide. And then we have a transport layer, some other protocols, internet layer, network access layer, some protocols as well. So, this is TCP/IP protocol suite. So at the application layer, we have some protocols that work at this layer. For example, let's start with DNS, domain name system. Now DNS, what it's going to do is going to is going to convert or translate names to IP addresses. So you give it a name, it'll give you an IP address. So convert names to an IP address. You can do the other way around. You give an IP address, it will be able to convert it to a name for you. But usually we remember names, not numbers. So we give a name. For example, www.bbc.co.uk, DNS will say, okay, well, there's an IP address for BBC. Now, the next protocol that works at the application layer is BootP and DHCP. Those two protocols are for leasing or signing dynamically IP addresses to a client. So, client is going to ask for an IP address, and DHCP is going to assign or lease an IP address to the client. Now, BootP was protocol before DHCP. DHCP has um, kind of made the boot P redundant really because DHCP every we use it now. Then we have an email. Email, there's three protocols in, in uh, application layer of email. The, we have SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, which is for sending emails. POP3 is for receiving emails and IMAP is for receiving emails as well. Now these protocols, the two protocols for receiving emails, they both do the same thing. The POP and IMAP, they both do the same thing receive emails but pop receive the email and once you receive an email it deletes the email from the server while imap when you, once you receive an email email is still stays at the server so imap you can think of it as synchronization email with the server rather than actually downloading them so if you really want to delete the emails from the server you have to manually go to the server and delete the email for yourself yourself then we have a file transfer protocol ftp so and tftp those two protocols, obviously, like the name says, will help you to transfer files between the source and destination. Then we have a web web protocol, HTTP. You are more more most uh, people they understand this protocol. What is a web protocol? You open the web browser, Google. That's the protocol you're using. HTTP. Then at the transport layer, we have two protocols. We have UDP and TCP. Now UDP is unreliable protocol, while TCP is reliable protocol. So, okay, one unreliable, one reliable. I would choose a reliable one better. Yep. Yeah, I would say so as well. But UDP has its place as well. UDP, we need it, for example, for applications that they, they need fast uh, transfer of data. For example, like voice over IP. They can tolerate little bit of packet loss. For some reason, if we lose some packets, it's fine. It's better. To, to lose them than to try and, and send them again and so on because it will create delays and so on. So delay sensitive application that require UDP protocol. Well, TCP is a reliable protocol. So when we send an up a packet or quite a few segments, we would require acknowledgement that you received the packets. 
but they are not delay sensitive applications. For example, if you open a web browser that's using TCP, now if you uh, receive the web page like maybe, I don't know, one or two seconds later than what you should have, you wouldn't even know the, the difference. So yeah, it's fine. And But reliability is there. So for example, say that you do the banking. Well, the, you do want the packets to go to the destination and make sure that they are getting to the destination. So if they are two, three seconds later, it's fine. We can resend them again and so on. While UDP, think of it as um, voice, voice over IP or video over IP. So imagine there's a video stream coming on. For, it's fine if the few packets they drop, you know that you don't see the video as, as clear as you'd like, but you still see the video. It's better than trying to resend them again, which is gonna make more delays. Then we have an internet layer. At the internet layer, we have some protocols that work here. One of the main protocols that works is IP protocol, internet protocol. This is a logical addressing. Logical meaning that we can change addresses. Today we are in this address, tomorrow we can have a different address. It's like your home address really. Now then we have a NAT, network address translation. This protocol will translate private IP addresses to public IP addresses. ICMP, this is more about troubleshooting that we use, like ping, trace route, and so on. Then we have some routing protocols like OSPF and EIGRP. They will share information about destination, remote destinations, and find out the best path to get to those destinations. Then we have a network access layer. A network access layer, we have some protocols that work at this layer. ARP, address resolution protocol. This is when you want to find out what IP address has got what MAC address. So you broadcast, you say, okay, uh, who's got IP address 10111? And the one that has, they say, yeah, me, this is my MAC address. Then we have a, you will learn about these protocol, the PPP more in, in uh, CCNA 704. So this is for wide area network, PPP. And then we have the Ethernet network, Ethernet protocol that is, for example, tells you what kind of what kind of cabling you're going to be using straight through, crossover, and so on. And then we have our interface drivers. Open standards, open standards, they do encourage competition and innovation, as well as the advantage of network devices implementing open standard protocols, such as from, uh, from TCP IP suite is the clients and server running different operating system can communicate with each other. Great, yeah? So for example, I can buy a PC and you have an Apple computer. We can still send and receive data to each other because we use using open standard protocols, not uh, vendors proprietary protocols. Internet standards are controlled by Internet Corporation and assign names and numbers, ICANN. They, they, they control, like for example, the define of IP addresses and they give to IANA which will distribute it to regional offices, and then you can purchase the IP addresses from them. So for example, we can purchase IP addresses, we can purchase domain name, and they control of TCP and UDP port numbers. Electronics and Communication Standard Organization, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, or IEEE for, sto for short, is the group that actually is in charge of all, pretty much anything that starts at A to two. And we're going to talk in our course, we're going to talk a lot about A to do this, A to do this, and so on. The benefits of using layered model. Assist in protocol design. Fosters competition. Prevents technology or capabilities changes in one layer from affecting other layers above and below. Provides a common language to describe networking functions and capabilities. For example, uh, here we have a layered OS OSI model and TCP IP model. So we have layered here. Um, for example, if there's a changes on the network layer, for example, say in the future, maybe we have a different IP, IP version. So we don't have to change anything on the transport layer or the data link layer. But just because we make changes on the network layer, other changes that don't happen. OSI reference model. Now this is, this is the reference model. These are the seven layers. They're pretty much gonna go through the semester, CCNA semester one. But anyway, we go very quickly here. Um, you do have to remember them. We start at level, layer seven, application layer. The application layer provides a means for end-to-end -end connectivity between individuals in the human networking using data networks. Now, one of my old students used to say, okay, well, why do we start with layer seven? What can't we just start with layer one? Good answers, good question, but the answers to that is that we are here. We are the top of the OSI model. We, so when we click something or open something, the first interaction that we're gonna have through the network is the application layer. 
if we're gonna go through the network say no if we open for example say you open notepad you're not gonna go through the network layer so you're not gonna interact with any of the layers but say that we open the web browser or we open the email that means that we are accessing our network so definitely it's gonna go through the layers and the first layer that's gonna meet us is the application layer the job of the application layer is to identify what kind of application you are using to access the network then we have a presentation layer so the layer underneath the application is presentation so as a packet will start from here and it will go down through the layers so the presentation layer provides a common representation of data transfer between application layer services okay what that says is that it takes the application stream take this st it's called a stream yeah so it takes that stream looks at the presentation and it thinks okay well how can I format this doesn't need encryption before I send, I send it. Formatting, for example, is it JPEG or MPEG and so on. So how am I going to present this stream? The session layer is the one underneath that. The session layer provides services to the presentation layer to organize its dialogue and to manage data exchange. OK, what this says is like it's, a, it's like a management layer. It's make sure that the, the communication is there, make sure that, OK, I need to set it up and terminate the communication if it's idle, I need to reset the communication again, and so on. Layer 7, 6, and 5 are considered uh, upper layer protocols. And then we continue with layer 4, which is transport layer. Now, transport layer defines services to segment, transfer, and reassemble the data for individual communication between the devices. What this says is like, okay, well, we take this stream. So from the application goes to session, sorry, presentation, then to the session, and it reaches transport. Transport layer says, okay, well, do I need to do I need to segment it? Do I need to make it into small pieces? So, in this, for example, I want you to imagine that you're transferring uh, from from you to your friend a big cupboard. Now, big cupboard, uh, as far as the application presentation session is concerned, it's like okay. Well, I want you to take this big cupboard as it is and send it to the destination. Well, transport layer looks at it and says, okay. Well, I need to actually break it down into small pieces, like un undismantle it, so it will be easy to transport. Yeah. But while, while, he's making this, while he's breaking that cupboard or dismantling into small pieces, it's, that's called segmenting. And it's important that each segment gets sequence number. So for example, okay, piece one out of 10, piece two out of 10, piece three out of 10, four out of 10, and so on. So when you, receive, when you send it to the destination, the destination can look at these pieces and say, okay, well, I need to reassemble them to the way they were sent. It's like, a, I don't know, if you buy a cover from Ikea, you get all the pieces, you get the list, say, okay, well, you need to reassemble them before you give it to the upper layers. Then we have a lower layers. They continue with the layer three, for example, next is the network layer. Network layer decides, okay, well, I need to send it from the source to the destination, give an IP address. Source IP address, source, uh, sorry, destination IP address. Those two information, they do not change from the source to the destination will always be the same. Yeah, apart from NAT when we use network address translation, but that's again in semester two. Then we have the next layer, which is data link layer. Data link layer, um, what is it? Data link layer protocol describes method for exchanging data frames between devices of a common medium. Now, data link layer is layer two, and it puts a physical addresses, physical MAC address, source, and physical MAC address of destination. Now the data link layer information like that will get changed from the source to the destination. It gets changed hop by hop. So as from the, so for example, from the PC to the router, source is a PC, the gateway or the router is a destination, not the, actually the far end, the destination where you're going. So because then that data gets ch changed or replaced at every hop. And then we have a physical layer. Physical layer deals with actually moving the zeros and ones, actually physical, zeros and ones electricity waves or lights or whatever it sends it from the source to destination then we have a same tcp ip model is the same as the, the osi model just has few fewer layers this model actually was the first and the osi model took this model and said okay well we do actually need to separate it even further because we need to describe each layer a bit in more detail what's happening here for example, data link layer has got is separated in two other sub layers as well. You have a LLC and MAC layer, which you will learn on the next chapter, I think.
Okay, this has been Astro Krasnichi uh, helping you or describing to you section 2.2, uh, 3.2, and uh, hopefully to see you in the next video. 3.3 data transfers in the network. Bye bye.